this is a lot of prepper here, and what we're talking about the danger or the benefits of having a bug out with your pets. Do, do you take them all with you? Do you leave them behind now? Rufus is a little small dog, and he's not going to survive being left behind. And he's old, too. And he's an older dog. Plus, <clears throat> on top of that, Rufus has got a mouth. Someone comes up, he's going to be yapping. If you're having to do a cloak and dagger and hide, he's going <clears> to <throat> make noise. He's not going to be quiet. That's something to think about. I have him and a pug and three cats. The three cats, I can leave food behind, water behind, leave a window open, and they will survive. And they will adapt, too. The pug, he is a problem. He was a problem dog when I took him in. I call him food. I would not be able to, most likely, not take him with me. I might try to take him with me, but then again, I might end up having to release him to survive on his own. Rufus would die on his own. To have an animal in a situation, if you are a prepper or even a non-prepper, if you are about nature, you need to uh, train your animals to be quiet and times not to be quiet. Just like a tra like as uh, traveling kids do, um, you'll find like most traveling kids not homeless. Okay, let's get this straight. Not homeless, but the transients, the travelers. Uh, a good part of us, I usually have dogs with us, and we actually train them. What we say, what we call n no snitching means do not give up, do not bark, do not give up our position. Because for a lot of us, it's survival because we're doing illegal squats most of the time. And if that dog gives up our position, we're looking at going to jail and this and that. And in a lot of cases, too, our dogs are euthanized. Well, like here. Now, see, Rufus, even though I'm playing with him, but the growling, the noise will give you away. If you're forced to run, he's not going to be able to keep up with me. If I'm forced to go somewhere, I see many prepper sites that's got seven or eight dogs. And they talk about surviving, prepping, and doing this, that. I call them idiots. You got seven or eight dogs and you're forced to leave your home. What are you going to do with those seven or eight dogs? I'm going to eat them. I'm just saying, it's me, because I mean, little dogs are tend to be like the worst things to ever take with you, and and once you go about a week and a half, two weeks, I'm telling you that that dog gonna look real, real tasty. So are you gonna do this and carry him? You got your backpack on. You're having to carry your dog because he's just not gonna be able to walk forever. How you gonna carry about you know three, five, twenty dogs with you though? That's just it. You ever seen these dog walkers with the skates on and they got like dogs on each side? I did that with my husky once. The thing is, is that, is it feasible, even if I put a little backpack on him, you had to train them. You had to start training them at a young age to have the backpack to carry their own weight. You are going to carry the food. So if you got seven or eight dogs, how are you going to do all this? Well, I, I just want to say this though. In that kind of situation, especially if you're in a group situation, and that dog starts giving up position when, say, the military or militia is coming after you, your dog, most likely whoever is leading that group or some of the group members will kill your dog just to shut that dog up, keep oh, yeah. able to keep everybody alive. So just keep that in mind that your dog, you're looking at, if, if your dog doesn't die, you're going to kill everybody in that group. And what's more important, keeping people alive or that little, or that little yapping dog? That's true. I love my little dog here. He would have go with me most likely if I had to bug out. But also it's keeping him quiet. So is it a smart thing to bug out with the animals? Is it a smart thing to have seven or eight dogs? Is it a smart thing to have all these animals? No. Once Rufus passed away and I don't want to lose him, but when he does, I would most likely go with a big dog for the purpose of training him. And I would have to start with a younger dog and get him used to going on trails and stuff with me. Get him used to being with a leash attached to my backpack. And we're not talking about like a little cock we're not talking about a cocker spaniel either. I'm talking about like a German Shepherd, Rottweiler, a, you know, a husky, a dog that will actually go hunt and actually bring even you food. Even the wolf dogs, those big, huge wolf dogs, uh, Great Danes, Doberman Pinchers, things that are designed 
to hunt. Even a doggone coon hound or a bird dog. Oh. Hunt. Sorry. Well, it's getting ready. It's starting to rain it out here. Getting ready to? No, it is. So, you know what? In a survival situation, you may just have to be using these trees for shelter. Rufus just needs a bath, but the fact is, is it a wise thing? And then you need, if you are a prepper and you do have small animals, you need to start thinking about what you are going to do and which animal you are going to leave behind, which animal you're going to take behind, and what kind of animal you need. So we're going to cut it short because it's raining. So I want you to be safe, be happy, bless you all, and think about what kind of animal you need. Little dog, Din Din.